Konnichiwa. It's history in the making, and we want you to be part of it. And that's a given. Talking about people who are changing the game. You guys have run a tight ship here. Oh, my gosh. The rock star sitting here. I, I can't even describe it. <laughs> Talking about actual business. Two beings at the top of their profession. Yes. Started. Lightning quick movements. Changing the rock star sitting here. It's just started. Welcome back to the Real Value Podcast, the podcast about finding value in anything and everything and about creating as much of it as you can with the short time we have. Good morning, my friends. My name is Blaine Fyan, founder of the Coaching Academy, Chief Evangelist at True Footage, and your host for this and every episode of the always sponsor free Real Value Podcast. Hoping the sound of my voice finds you happy, healthy, prosperous, and profitable, my friends. Now, as most of you know, I am a business a wealth building, a success coach in a few industries, most notably in the real estate appraisal industry. It is the industry I can say I relate with the most because, well, I'm in it every day since I still lead my own appraisal firm while also getting to work with literally hundreds of great appraisers at True Footage. Now, I've been learning and evolving in this business, like many of you, for over three decades now, 21 years on the appraisal side, five years on the lending side, four years on the real estate sales side, and as a real estate investor since 1998. And it has been through my coaching experiences over those years that I have been granted the awesome opportunity to see time after time what people struggle with in their lives and in their businesses. And what I can tell you from doing this for as long as I have, is that almost all of the issues and challenges people deal with in life and in business can be boiled down, essentially, to less than 10 things. Now, what I mean by that is that whatever issues you're having in your business, for example, can be thrown into, oh, let's say, uh, the marketing and branding category, the sales category, the systems and processes category, the management and leadership category, or maybe the goals and vision category. Those are just examples, of course, but they're very real ones. Maybe there are two or three more categories we could lump problems, issues, and challenges into, but you get the idea. However unique you believe your issue to be, it is similar in some way, shape, or form to an issue that somebody else has or has had, and there is a solution. And the solution is usually pretty simple. Now, it might not be easy, but it's simple to identify and diagnose. Whether or not you're capable of taking the advice and doing something with that advice is where things go from simple to maybe more complex. No matter how easily identifiable the issue is, nor how simple the prescription might be, we often have mental and emotional blocks that keep us from moving forward with the proposed solutions. Now, why do I bring this up? Where are we going with all of this, Blaine? Well, where we're going in this episode is back to the future. We're going to go back in time to fix some of the things that are absolutely guaranteed to change your future. Thus, back to the future. Now, how do we do that? You might ask, well, it's actually quite simple, but it's not easy. It really only takes having an understanding of how things work to understand how and why you are where you are, wherever that might be. And I don't mean to be elusive and all zen about this, but we do have to set the stage first before delving into the science of all this stuff. More importantly, though, is the why. Why are we talking about how to change your past to change your future in this episode? Well, we're talking about this topic because it seems appropriate at this point in time. I could do yet another episode on, say, how to get more business coming in for all the appraisers listening. I could do another show about marketing or branding. I could do another show about getting your systems and processes in order, and I will at some point have no fear. However, right now, friends, in December of 2022, people are stressed and anxious. People are wondering what's going on. What's coming next? Where do I go? What do I do? Do I wait this thing out? Do I get a second job? Do I look for a side hustle? Will things ever go back to the way they were? Now, all of these are valid questions, and I'm not going to answer all of them directly in this episode because those uh, questions represent, and the answers to those things, our innate need for clarity and confirmation before acting. Not to mention, I don't have a crystal ball. We want to know definitively that things will go in our favor before we make a move. And I am not qualified to give you that in this podcast. I can't assure you of anything. What I can give you 
is some understanding of how our brains and our thoughts work, however, and what that will help with is finding the answers to those questions within yourself, not outside of you, which is where everybody believes the answers lie. What it should also help with is vision and clarity going forward. And in fact, what I will say about the time we're in right now is that this is the time when some of the most beneficial changes to your life and your business are likely to occur. Let me explain. The greatest life changes, the greatest life alterations tend to occur around crisis, around pain, suffering, discomfort, and trauma. To say it another way, most people make no changes to their lives without some painful impetus. Most people, myself included, naturally seek more comfort as we age, more familiarity, and more guarantees from life as we grow. This means that we're less likely to make changes to continue growing once we believe we have found the path to, say, increase or to comfort. We're unlikely to disrupt routine and seek more discomfort as a path for growth as we age. No, people rarely do that on their own. They tend to wait until something outside of them forces the change. However, many look back years later and say, that whatever that thing was, whatever the pain, the suffering, the trauma, the impetus to force them into change was the best thing that happened to them because it forced them to move in a direction they wouldn't have otherwise if it wasn't forced upon them in some way. So let's talk about the why of all this so that you can get to the fun stuff. Here's how things work when it comes to our brains, our emotions, and our actions. It is an indisputable fact that the way we think has an effect on the way our lives go. How could it not? The thoughts that we have are always connected to a feeling, a chemical reaction we call an emotion, even if we're not aware of it. Every thought has a corresponding emotional or chemical reaction within within us. Some emotions are stronger, of course, than others, and some of those corresponding emotions are negative, while some are positive. They can't be neutral, by the way. Emotions are not neutral. You might say to yourself, yeah, I'm kind of in the middle on that thing, but you still have emotions around it the nature of emotions. They're either positive or the negative. They can't be neutral. We think a thought. It triggers within us a chemical reaction. The thoughts we think and the emotions we have about those thoughts, even if they're subconscious, they're the below, excuse me, below the range of our conscious uh, responses or or our conscious awareness, they inform our actions. They inform the actions we take on a moment to moment basis. And again, even if we're not aware that it's happening. Now, many may not be aware of this statistic, but humans tend to have, get ready for this, somewhere between 50,000 and 80,000 thoughts per day, most of which will fly well below our conscious radar. Now, the more staggering stat is that 90% of those thoughts, get this, are the same thoughts that you had yesterday and are the same ones that you will have tomorrow. The same thoughts trigger the same emotions, which trigger the same behaviors. It makes sense that the same choices and behaviors tend to lead to the same experiences and results more or less. And since we're having the same experiences more or less each day, it stands to reason that the same emotions happening over and over trigger the same thoughts over and over. It becomes a cycle of confirmation and eventually becomes what we call a habit. How we think, How we feel and then act is what we eventually call our personality. And your personality is largely responsible for what becomes your personal reality. If you want something to change in your reality, you literally, now I know people toss around literally and figuratively. No, you literally and figuratively have to become a different person. If you want to change your reality, you have to change your personality in some way or in some area. If you want to experience something different in your personal reality, you have to change that part of your personality that is getting the result that you want to change. Remember what we said earlier, that most people never make a change until something forces them into that change. Why is this? Because most people never think about what they think about. I'll say it again. Most people never think about what they think about. They never stop and listen to the thoughts in their head and then ask, why do or did I have that thought and what result is that thought getting for me? And where most people get it wrong when trying to get different results is that they try to have a different personal reality with the old personality. And it simply doesn't work that way. 
You cannot think the same thoughts, have the same triggering emotions about those thoughts, behave in the same way based on those emotions, and then expect a different result long term. You might get some new results in the short term, but if the personality is the same, the thoughts and emotions are the same, we eventually fall back to our old familiar patterns and personality traits. It's like a massive tractor beam pulling us back into our old ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. In fact, brain studies have shown that by the time we're 35 years old, we are a big set of unconscious memorized behaviors and habits. The same thoughts trigger the same emotions, trigger the same behaviors, and it is all automatic. And in fact, by that time, 95% of our behaviors are a conditioned set of unconscious habits and programs. By the time you're 35, friends, everything, for the most part, 95%, is a conditioned set of unconscious habits and programs. The synapses in our brains have made connections that just continue to fire automatically without any conscious input from us. And in fact, the saying in the neurology world is that the nerve cells that fire together wire together. I'll say it again. Think about the, what's going on in your brain. Every time you think of something, you're firing nerve cells, and then you take actions. Remember, those thoughts uh, trigger emotions that then trigger behaviors, and then we get a result. Well, any of the nerve cells that fire together end up eventually wiring together. It is the reason, by the way, that we will consciously practice something over and over. We consciously practice things to wire together the synapses and the neurons in our brain so that we can automatically, or as close to automatically as possible, do that thing unconsciously at some point. Imagine, you know, d- taking a free throw in basketball and you do it over and over and over. Why? To wire the neurons and synapses that are firing in your brain and your body, telling your arm to move a certain way, your body to move a certain way, your knees, your legs, the neurons that fire together or the nerve cells that fire together eventually wire together. Think about it this way. Every morning when you wake up, you do the same routine more or less the same way your bathroom routine, your shower routine, even the way you dry yourself off after you you get out of the shower has a distinctly familiar pattern to it, whether you know it or not. Become observant of it going forward after you listen to this podcast and you'll notice we dry ourselves off more or less the same way each time we get out of the shower. Coffee, breakfast, brush teeth, whatever your particular routine is, it's just like a computer routine in that it runs in the background without you having to think about it. While good for getting stuff done in an efficient way sometimes, these are called heuristics or shortcuts that so we, you know, our brain creates those naturally so that we don't have to always think consciously about things. But what it means is that 95% of what we think about every day is from our past. Our brains are a record of every past event and experience we've ever had, even if you can't access those anymore. And it's those records of the past that create the automatic programs that run 95% of our day. And since 95% of our thoughts are from the past, we are essentially always living from the past. We might have thoughts about the future, but without a clear vision and plans for stepping into that future, the tractor beam of past thoughts, emotions, habits, and subsequent behaviors will always draw us back into our familiar patterns. That's just the way it works, friends. And this is the reason that most people make no changes until something big happens and they're forced to change. Now, there's a saying in meditative and deeper spiritual practices that essentially says, the essence of life is to die before you die so that you won't die when you die. Let me say it again. The essence of life is to die before you die so that when you die, you don't really die. I know I said it two different ways. It's a fairly deep concept. I'm not going to go into it in depth on this show, but at its core, this saying speaks to dying to the old thoughts, the old ego, the innate habit of living in and from the past and from past thoughts and giving up many of the attachments that we all subconsciously carry. Knowing what we now know about how the mind works, thoughts, emotions, belief, actions, results, and then back to the old thoughts again, what the early sages knew was that to truly grow, we have to die to our old selves, cut those patterns and those habits, and then slowly be reborn to a new self each day. We have to give up our attachments to those old patterns of thinking, break those old neuro patterns, and then establish new ones 
based on a vision of the future that you want to live into instead of a past that you keep living from over and over and over subconsciously. So let me summarize what this all means and why I think it's an appropriate time to be talking about this topic. What this means is that if you want something different than what you're experiencing now, you literally, there's that word again, you literally have to become a different person in some way, which by the way, most people are adamantly and violently resistant to. They will say things like, this is just the way I am. Accept it or move on. Your personality becomes your personal reality based on the moment-to-moment thoughts, which come mostly from our past, the corresponding or subsequent emotions that are triggered by that thought, the actions we end up taking or not taking based on that thought and the trailing emotion, the subsequent results we get from that action, and then the inevitable confirmation loop of them thinking about the results we just got and creating a habit. It is a cycle. It is a loop that continues over and over and over every second of every day. The habit becomes part of who we are and thus part of our personality. And if it's part of your personality, it is informing your personal reality. You're getting the results you're getting because of who you are and your patterns, not necessarily because of external circumstances. If you want something different, you literally have to become somebody different. Since most people have a hard time holding an image or a vision of something they'd like to have or be in the future, what do they do? They fall back to their past hardwired patterns and they end up getting the same results, which quite often lead to feeling helpless. They have a difficult time believing in a future that they can't see and feel with their senses yet, so they default back to what they can see and feel And that is what informs their reality. You look around today in December of 2022 and you say, my business is down 75% and it's because of stuff going on outside of me. It's the interest rates. It's the Fed. It's the markets. It's China. It's Iran. It's you name it. And these are all things I can't control. This just uh, confirms what you already believe and the pattern is set. Now, Everything you see around you just confirms what you told yourself was true. See, it's somebody else. It's the market. It's the interest rates. It's the Fed. And it just keeps cycling. And your personal reality informs and becomes your personality. And your personality just keeps reinforcing your personal reality. It becomes a vicious cycle that you're completely unaware of because it's all happening beneath your level of conscious perception. Remember, the nerve cells that fire together wire together. Keep firing the nerve cells that see lack, that see not enough, that say, this is the way I was taught. I don't know what to do. I'm helpless. I'm not good at that thing. I'll wait this thing out. And this is just who I am. And of course, those nerve cells will wire together and become who you are. If you want something different, you literally have to become somebody different. Now, if you've never read the book Atomic Habits, we talk about it on the show all the time. The author is James Clear. I highly recommend doing so. James Clear says several times throughout the book, and I love this aspect and this part of the book, that humans do not rise to the level of their goals. He talks a lot about goal setting and the folly of goal setting. In fact, I did a podcast maybe just three, four, five weeks ago about how goal setting is BS. And I got that a concept more or less uh, hammered into me by Atomic Habits. I had learned it many, many years ago, said a different way, and then James Clear put better words to it. We don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. That's why the goal only points us in the direction, but then we have to have systems, processes, habits, breakdown of those goals to daily activities if we want to achieve any kind of success. This isn't a new concept. And in fact, I firmly believe that, uh, this is just an aside, I think James Clear kind of stole this idea from a, an ancient Greek poet, maybe you've heard of him, maybe not, named Archilochus, who said, we don't rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our training. That's where I originally heard it 20 plus years ago in Aikido training. We don't rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our training. James Clear said it's slightly different. Humans don't rise to the level of their goals. They fall to the level of their systems. But it's essentially the same thing. Whatever the quote and whoever said it, the sentiment is that whether it's our systems or our training, both of those men 
are talking about the subconscious patterns that keep pulling us back into a way of being, doing, and experiencing life. If you want something different than you are experiencing, you have to reprogram the systems. You literally have to become somebody different. The systems are all of your old thoughts, beliefs, patterns, habits, and the nerve cells that have long since wired together from firing together so many millions of times. Now, before I wrap up this episode, something I've uh, neglected over the years, I'm going to ask you some important questions about this topic. But if you want to get this podcast delivered to your email box each week, you can join what we call the Value Syndicate. It is completely free to join. We sell you nothing. It is simply my way of adding value for you as a loyal listener. If you want to become part of the Value Syndicate, just go to realvaluecoach.com slash blog, realvaluecoach.com slash blog. You will see a quick sign up box at the top. All we ask for is a name and your email address. I don't care. Lie about your name. We don't sell you anything. But if you do that, not only do you receive the podcast before everyone else gets it each week, you also get some bonus episodes that the general public doesn't get. If you're listening on Spotify or iTunes or whatever, awesome. I appreciate it. You just don't get the bonus episodes. I record special episodes from time to time just for members of the Value Syndicate. And again, it is all completely free. I am passionate about teaching, coaching, and help people level up. So if you'd like to be part of this kind of inner circle, so to speak, just go to realvaluecoach.com slash blog and get those bonus episodes. Let me say, for those of you who aren't familiar with the way email works, please, please, please check your spam box and be sure to confirm the membership if it is in there. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times we send out emails to people, either for the podcast or for coaching, and they go, I didn't get it. And I think to myself, gosh, email has been around for 35 years Check your spam box, folks. Lots of stuff ends up in spam if the spam bo- uh, filters don't have never seen that email before. So please, if you want to be part of the Value Syndicate, just go there. Check us out. Now, to close out this episode, I will ask you some questions that you'll want to write down and ask yourself from time to time. The questions are these. Can you become somebody different than you are today? Now, this is not a yes or no question. This is something to ponder deeply. Meaning I'm not just asking you to say, yes, yes, and say I can become somebody different than I am today. No, this is a question for you to ponder, to meditate upon. Can you become somebody different than you are today? Are you willing to do something you've never done before to have or experience something you've never experienced before? And as you ask these questions and ponder them, think about the time we are in. For many of you, the answers will come easily because you'll think, you're, because you're scared, you're fearful, you're anxious, You have anxiety. Again, where are we? Where does this all go? What's happening? Should I wait it out? Do I need to do something different? And it's usually that fear and anxiety that gets people moving. This is a great time, by the way. I don't mean that to be flippant. I know many people are wondering where their their next meal is going to come from, how they're going to pay the bills because business hasn't been coming in. That's why these questions are so important. Are you willing to do something that you've never done before to have or experience something you've never experienced before? Next question. Are you able to monitor your mindset moment to moment? I did a a podcast several years ago where one of the tips I talked about was monitor your mind moment to moment, monitor your thoughts moment to moment, monitor your mindset moment to moment for a time. You obviously can't do it forever, but are you able to monitor your mindset moment to moment for a time and become aware of the thoughts that you are responsible for or that are responsible for the results that you get day to day. Can you find those root thoughts that then lead to emotions, which lead to actions, which get you results? Then you have thoughts about the results and then it becomes a loop. If you can find the originating or the root thought or thinking or belief system that's getting the results that you're currently getting and you don't like the results you're getting, well, the root thought is the thing to change. That's how you become literally a different person. Remember, your personality becomes your personal reality. Next question. Are you willing to change your personality to experience a different personal reality? Are you willing to change your personality? People who say, this is just who I am. Take it or leave it. Those are people unwilling to look at themselves in the mirror and change their personality, not recognizing that their personality creates their personal reality. Are you willing to stop drawing on thoughts from your past in order to have a different future? 
Now, most of you never knew that, that this is the way our brains work until you heard this episode. But it's absolutely true. Almost everything you think today, 95% of your thoughts of those 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts are the same thoughts you had yesterday. Which means if you go back in time to yesterday, 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts, 95% of those thoughts were from the day before. Now go back to the day before. 95% of those thoughts were from the day before. And you see the cycle. Every day you wake up, for the most part, we do lots of the same things in the same way, the same routine. And 95% of those 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts are the same or similar thoughts that you had yesterday, just cycling over and over and over. And until you consciously interrupt and start to monitor your mindset moment to moment, think about your thoughts, think about what you're thinking about, nothing changes because it's subconscious. So I'll ask the question again, are you willing to stop drawing on thoughts from your past in order to have a different future? It takes conscious intention and effort. And the follow-up to that is, can you believe in a future that you can't yet see or feel? Are you able to believe in a future state, in a future that you cannot yet see or feel? Most people struggle with this. They think, if I can't see it and I can't feel it, I can't imagine it, it ain't happening. So what do they do? They default back to what they see all around them in the current moment. That is not how creation works, my friends. You create your reality by thinking into the future that you want to see and you want to live into. And then you create emotion around it and you recruit all of the senses you can so that you can see, hear, feel, taste, smell, and touch whatever that future experience is, that future state. And if you can recruit all of your emotions, eventually that becomes your personal reality over time. But if you're constantly looking around you, in essence, looking into the past and going, well, look what I have now. This is my current experience. And then relying on that to create your future experience, your future experience will look scarily like your past. Because remember, every day, 95% of those thoughts, same thoughts you had yesterday. Can you believe in a future that you can't see and feel yet? And if the answer to that one is no, I cannot believe in a future that I can't see and feel. Well, then what would it take for you to be able to see and feel something that doesn't appear to exist yet? And you know what we call that? We call it goal setting. Goal setting and vision planning. You look forward, but you have to then spend time every day around those goals and that vision. You have to spend a little time every day recruiting all of your emotions to imagine what it would feel like to be in that future state. My friends, if you want help with any of the answers or all of these questions, do not hesitate to reach out and have a chat with me. It's what I do every day, and I'd love to have a chat with you about all of these things. Now, until that happens, please keep asking those questions and start becoming somebody new. Until next week, my friends, I'm out.